So Ned Luke, as you know, the voice actor for Michael from GTA 5, fairly popular on social media right now, has a bit of a fan base. He's very expressive with his opinions on a host of topics, but it seems very recently, at least on Twitter, he received a bit of pushback from one of his opinions. So it all started with this tweet. Yo, Ned Luke, you gotta see this one, man. And it's a link to a song. The video from the channel ERWTSA, Everyone Raps, Welcome to San Andreas, allegedly showcased Michael singing the GTA San Andreas song, Welcome to San Andreas, and the video was made private a few days after Ned Luke said, fuck that AI shit, not a fan of people pirating my voice, just saying. So someone made a AI voice replica of, ne uh, of Michael's voice, had him sing a song, and Ned Luke said, yo, not a fan of that shit, and it was taken down. This is actually the gimmick of the entire channel. The channel features various AI covers of the same song, ERWTSA videos. So you can see here, it's like Eminem, LeBron James, 50 Cent. It's always the same song. It, it, it's a weird gimmick. The owner of ERWTSA publicly apologized to Ned Luke through a community post. My apologies to the great actor Ned Luke for using his voice in one of my videos, and I deeply regret not deleting the video right after his comment on X. Who the hell calls Twitter X? I just found out today that he does not approve it. So please, my friends, let me know if anyone doesn't like his voice being used that way by sending me an email, and I'll always gladly comply and remove the video. I apologize again to Mr. Luke, and I never meant any disrespect. I'm a huge fan of you, and I hope you accept my apology. It hasn't stopped him from doing other voices from other famous people. So that's like the first step in this story. Sometime later, Ned Luke later engaged with a now deleted tweet made by a company named WAME, where they said, any GTA fans around here? Now take your gaming experience to another level. Try having a realistic voice conversation with Michael DeSanta, the protagonist of GTA 5, right now. Ned retweeted this and said, this is fucking bullshit. Absolutely nothing cool about ripping people off with some lame computer estimation of my voice. Don't waste your time on this garbage. Grand Theft Vocal, five stars. This is some bullshit. Y'all really gonna use my voice without my permission, without Rockstar Games' permission? You fucking kidding me? Not a good idea. While Rockstar does give broad license to use aspects of their game to create content, I don't think they've ever made a stance to say that you can use the stuff to make AI voices. But of course, essentially a lot of the stuff that we do is outside of uh, TOS and what they allow. Ned Luke continues, Dude, I have assholes using AI to create bullshit race racist rants, etc. to try to get me cancelled. This is dangerous fucking shit that needs to be addressed ASAP. After these statements from Ned Luke, uh, Wham replied to them, First and foremost, I extend my sincerest apologies. As a fan of GTA, my intention was to implement interactions with GTA game characters using AI without any commercial motives. I assure you that the app in question will be removed. Once again, I deeply regret any concern this may have caused and apologize sincerely. They also post an update on their website where they promise to protect the rights of voice actors and creators while advancing ethical AI practices. Conclusion, Wham commits to protecting the rights of voice actors and creators while advancing ethical AI practices. We believe this controversy serves as a pivotal moment in harmonizing AI technology with relevant legal statutes. Thank you, Wham executive team. Are there any relevant legal statutes currently? H has any country like formally put like hard line restrictions on what can be used with AI? Surely that must have happened to some degree right now, but I don't know where they are. So I felt like one thing that was relevant to this conversation is how easy it is to get like official voices from Ned Luke. He does have a cameo account, but it isn't as though like he will voice anything that you ask of him. I personally have one story where I asked Ned Luke to do a voice line for me for Pacifist a, a long time ago. We're talking four years now. And I talked about that in, in rambles a long time ago. Update for my request of Ned Luke, the voice actor for Michael to help me out with Pacifist Percent. For Pacifist, I tried on cameo to get Ned Luke to say me a particular line to use in one of the episodes and he wouldn't do it. And someone mentioned it to Ned Luke on Twitter. I think it's just sort of saying like, who was, who was Dark Viper AU or something. Uh, has nothing to do with Rockstar, whether or not I can do certain things, da da da. My so basically, I initially said that maybe the reason why Ned Luke couldn't do the voice line for me was because he was under some restrictions from Rockstar. I can't find footage of me saying this, but this is something that I said. And someone brought this up to Ned Luke, and Ned Luke replied, Who the hell is Dark Viper AU? Rockstar has nothing to do with it, not to burst your flat ass bubble or anything. So basically, Ned was just saying, I just didn't want to do it. And I go on to explain what I asked of him. Shame. In the is, of episode, course, I insinuated that Michael was far too willing to help out Dave and Steve. And I was going to use that joke, um, you son of a bitch, I'm in. That was a meme at the time that comes from Rick and Morty. But the, the audio from the actual episode isn't clean enough for it to work. So I thought, why not just get the actual actor to say it? So I would have had like Dave on screen and you just hear Michael's voice. 
of him saying it. But he said he wouldn't do it. I explained it to him as best I could, but he, uh, yeah. And I assumed it was some kind of a licensing thing, but he uh, suggested to me that's not the case. It's possible that he just doesn't want something done that can be taken out of context to make him look bad or something. I mean, I'll be frank with you, it's his loss. The video got like a million views. And I would have mentioned it in the description and shit. So he probably would have had a lot of traffic go to his cameo. So basically, in a world where you can't even really, through official channels, get certain lines said, it's not a surprise that people are going to go through illicit means to create these things. At the end of the day, this will always be a battle between free expression, you know, people's ability to make things to express themselves, and the right for others to control their work, their privacy, and their likeness. There are clearly things that you can do with other people's voices that I don't think is fine, obviously, but you know, for the last 10 years, we have been using voice lines in the game from Michael to get Michael to say things that he clearly didn't say in the game. And I don't think any of that is bad. The only problem I find here is if it gets so good that it's not obviously fake in a way. Because obviously if I use lines from Ned Luke in GTA 5 and I string them together to say something that he didn't say, it's going to not sound perfect. It's going to be obvious that I've done that. But if AI gets really, really good and it sounds exactly like Ned Luke, I can understand why that would be a concern. And of course, the threat of people using this for commercial purposes and replacing people's jobs and all that jazz. As I've said before, there are some things that only AI could really do. And for that reason, it's very unlikely that AI voices as a totality will ever go away. It is impossible to have Ned Luke personally read every single line in every single potential infle inflection to have machine learning algorithm be able to have actual conversations, right? In, in his voice. It, it just, it's just entirely impractical. But it's obviously just not fair to Ned Luke for him not to get compensated if, say, someone wanted his voice in a game or some commercial product or some such. If they're going to make money off his voice, he should be compensated for that. The point I'm trying to make is I, I draw a distinction between people using an AI voice to make a meme that they share on Twitter for funsies, that obviously in no way will you think is actually real versus say some commercial product coming out and being like, hey, Ned Luke has a nice voice. How about we use AI to, to rip it and put him in the game and give him nothing? I, I draw a distinction between those two things. For me, it depends on what you're making and for what reason. And if you're doing it for a commercial reason or what have you, there's a lot of memes made with AI that I find very funny. I don't think harm anyone because at the end of the day, that is my interest. What is the harm being caused here? Like right now, we have the availability of endless text-to-speech bots that people have been using for years to make memes. If one sounded a bit more like Michael DeSanta in a meme, I don't think that's the end of the world. There are presently AI voice clones of my voice. And I have said I would be concerned if that became like one-to-one -one indistinguishable from my actual voice. Although I do have reason to be less concerned about that because my speech pattern is so weird and my accent is so weird, and a lot of these models are trained on American voices, so it's a lot harder for them to match my cadence and the way that I speak. But people have made AI singing memes with me, uh, with my voice. They've made AI uh, uh, memes with my voice and stuff, and I'm totally fine with that, as long as it's clearly, obviously AI, or at least marked that way, so people won't misconstrue and think it's actually me. Being open and honest about this matters more, I think. But obviously, if someone made a commercial product and tried to replicate my voice in it, I would be I race. I, I would not want that. I'd be like, where's my money? That's my voice. In other words, I'm not entirely against AI voice cloning. It just depends on what it's being used for, to what extent, whether it's potentially harming the market for actual voice actors and the jobs that they need to survive. In general, I don't think artistic AI should be used for commercial use. As I say, there are some things that it is impossible for voice actors to do. You cannot have a person read every single word under the sun. If you are entirely against AI voices being used in commercial products, then there are some forms of expression, some games or what have you, that literally couldn't exist. I would, however, think in those cases, I would just think that the person who is the basis for those AI voices should be compensated accordingly. But I guess we'll see about that in the future, I suppose. AI could make for some wild random generated RPG that has a different story every playthrough, that sort of thing. Or to have actual conversations where the, the response is tailored to what you've actually inputted. It is impossible, as I say, to have an actor read the potential thousands upon thousands of ways that a machine learning algorithm could respond to text prompts. It is certainly a, an area where people can be harmed, and as I say, it just depends on factors of each individual case for me. So Ned Luke, of course, didn't receive any criticism for his stances here. If he wants to protect his voice, his likeness, that's totally his right. He got criticism uh, sometime later because of this take. Break here, says to Ned Luke, just a heads up at Ned Luke, this fan art is AI generated and they blocked me for saying it. And Ned Luke responds, who the fuck cares? The art in question is this, 
quite obviously, it, it screams of it being AI and certainly not an original design because uh, this image here is obviously Michael's classic ass. Um, you can find that on Google very easily. You can see here like uh, all this kind of smoothing and stuff. How it doesn't understand how power lines work and so they're all just kind of smudged together. The hands don't look exactly right. Like what even is this? I, I don't, is, what is this meant to be on his shirt? Like, like so much of this is just obviously this is AI. Obviously, B's response to this was who the fuck cares? So it's not cool that, you know, people may be, you know, losing their jobs as voice actors because of AI voice, voice generation software and stuff. But if artists are losing their jobs because of AI art, well, who the fuck cares kind of thing. Um, at least that's the way that it comes across where if it's impacting him and his livelihood, that's something to be concerned about. But other people, fuck them. Doesn't matter who fuck cares. So he continues. Couple of things here. First, how the hell do I know if it's AI or original or a derivative from art in the public domain? There would obviously be no ass in the public domain of GTA 5. Public domain is like many, many decades. Anyone looking at that art would obviously know that it's AI. It has every single sign of AI. Obviously over like, you know, maybe a decade from now, those signs won't exist. But right now you can clearly tell if something's AI. Or at least you can have some suggestions, some, some likelihood. Especially when it's as sloppy as that one was. I think he just doesn't like AI in general. No, he's saying who the fuck cares? He doesn't care if it's AI. He continues, show me the art this guy stole to make this. Second, there is the human element to this. I don't believe this was created by AI as much as with AI. For real, man. Uh, I don't think there's really much artistry here. Also, this is fan art. This guy is not trying to make money off of this art. That's true. Although, to be fair, that Wham guy says he wasn't using it for commercial purpose either. If that's the case, uh, and he is actually knowingly stealing, say, Patrick Brown's art, then yeah, we have a problem. I don't think that's what's happening here. Lots of fans use AI to do this. So what he's saying is the reason why he objected in the previous case was because he believed it was being used for a commercial purpose. What's, what's being suggested here is that he'd be fine with people using AI of his voice if it wasn't being used for a commercial purpose. I'm not sure if he would actually hold to that as phrased that way, but that is what is suggested by these statements. I don't have an issue with that. Frankly, most of it is not great at all. Just the fans saying, I like your character or you or whatever. Again, I don't have a problem with that. That's why if I see something I like or even don't like, I may comment on it. If you get butt hurt by that, then that's your right. It is to compare some fan using a filter to something blatantly taking my voice and trying to make money from it without my permission is just ridiculous. I can show you specifically what they are taking. If this guy tries to sell this stuff with my likeness, AI or otherwise, without permission, then that's an issue. Dumping a filter on top of some picture of me that's all over the internet isn't a problem. I mean, that's really reducing it. That's clearly not what he did. But yes, make good art yourself and you won't have to worry about this stuff. What you're talking about is akin to taking a photocopy of Van Gogh and hanging it in your house. You ain't making money off it and Vincent probably doesn't care either. But that said, I hear you and I can see the issue. I don't think this is a good example of the issue. I don't think this response is uh, pretty, uh, very bad, honestly. You could have interpreted from his previous hostilities that he's against all forms of AI. In this case, he's saying he's only against it in some particular context, largely when it's used for commercial purposes, rather than some fan just trying to show the love of a particular thing. To push back on that a little bit, the guy who used his voice to sing the, the San Andreas rap, it isn't like this guy was making fat stacks or something. The thing probably had like a thousand views and he was clearly also trying to show his love for that song and I guess Michael as well. Dude probably made like a couple of bucks. I, I guess that's enough for Ned Luke to say no, but you know. After receiving a bit of pushback, he said the next day, I just want to get this straight. So this is okay to like, but the other isn't. Is that right? I'm confused as to why one would get artist adversaries more butt hurt than the other. Neither done for profit, both evidently using someone else's art. So yeah, this is just a, a collage of various different bits of art made by, I, I think, I, I guess Rockstar. And this is of course the AI piece from before. I do think of course people would argue that there is a difference between using AI to generate something and you personally bringing together different elements to make something creative yourself. But as far as Ned Luke is concerned, neither is done for profit and so ultimately they both should be treated the same. Which again, isn't an unfair stance to take. Many people draw that line on a lot of things. If you're just a guy tinkering, making stuff out of enjoyment, that's very different than you trying to make a profit. Both made by fans of the game with no intention of gaining profit for their work. Don't rip one and not the other, then call me a hypocrite. My stance on this issue is clear. Fan shit, okay. Shit for profit, not okay. As long as he's willing to say that people can clone his voice for non-profit reasons, then that's totally fine. Previously, things he said suggest that he would not be okay with that. Back when he said here, dude, I have assholes using AI to create bullshit racist rants, etc. to try to get me canceled. This is dangerous fucking shit that needs to be addressed ASAP. So I suspect he would also say it's not just about profit, but potential for harm to whoever you're copying from. And things he said previously, I think 
in regards to art suggested that as well. It's it's very long, so maybe a bit of nuance is lost. Ben from Video Tech fired back. I don't think the issue lies on profit. Throwing in a bunch of words into an AI generator to create a drawing is not the best way to go, IMO. There's so many talented artists who fail to get recognition for their hard work because AI takes away that. Don't take this the wrong way, but as someone who loves to spend time creating concepts and such in Photoshop, it's a time consuming process. Drawing is just another story that takes even more time and requires really good talent. Ned responds, nobody is preventing them from doing their thing. These are just fans showing their love of the game. They aren't thieves or villains cutting off artists' livelihoods. If that were actually the case, my voice would be well heard and has been. The person who made this bit of fan ass in a, an AI generator was not likely going to, going to be hiring someone to make that um, for them. It isn't like an artist lost money or something. Without AI, this thing wouldn't exist. And I suppose that's the difference that uh, Ned is drawing there. But I, I think for a lot of people, any AI acceptance, even in these small kind of ways, is just a slippery slope in a way. It just leads to greater and greater acceptance. And as I've said before, I don't think this stuff is ever going to go away. It allows people to do things faster and cheaper and things that are not normally possible with actual artists. It's not at a level yet where it is so easy to do and create something good. Artists are entirely out of, out of a job. And I, I'd be very surprised if artists will ever be entirely out of a job. Like I know AI exists. I know AI art generators exists. I've never used one for any major purpose, right? I would I hire artists, not just for ethical reasons perhaps, but for practical ones. Artists are just better. But that may not always be the case. The more that people use these AI art generators, the more they accept them, the more people get used to using them, the more people begin to understand them, the more they are likely to impact the actual profitability of being an artist in this world, especially who have those jobs now. That's a concern that they're going to have, a justifiable one. That's unrelated to whether it's for profit or not. And that's what I think Ben is getting at here. It doesn't matter whether or not a person's generating profit by using AI art generators. That they're using them at all is changing the culture, the societal viewpoint on the technology as a whole, which would inevitably lead to other instances being more acceptable where people are using this stuff for, for profit. The only thing that's really going to hamper that, I think, is legislation. The question of social acceptance, I don't think it's entirely gone. Like, like clearly there's still huge parts of society who uh, don't accept this technology at all. But you can see me even, I am not entirely resistant to AI in some context for some reasons. Like everyone seems to have their line on this issue. If your goal is to have people not use AI at all to prevent any level of social acceptance, anyone having a line allowing some usage will be a threat to that, right? You have used an AI writing program, still waiting for you to hire a writer instead of the little fan fiction piece, pieces you were posting. Are you talking about my descriptions for my YouTube videos? As I've said, I have said in rambles that I do use AI to generate my descriptions by throwing my transcript into the chat GPT. I don't think the text stuff is particularly bad. There is no reality where I'm ever going to hire a writer to write descriptions because they don't seem to have any purpose. At least the common sentiment is that what's in the description doesn't really matter for how far your video reaches anymore because anyone can just throw anything in there. So I would either do it myself, which would take time, or as I used to do, like one paragraph, or I'll get AI to throw out some random gobbledygook with a, a bunch of keywords in it, or I will do nothing. There is no reality where anyone is losing out on a job because of me using that to save a little bit of time. I've shown the prompt that I use on a stream before. I don't think this text stuff is trained on like stolen material necessarily. It's just because text is freely available everywhere publicly. Based on the following YouTube video transcript, suggest 10 engaging clickable titles, write one description with three paragraphs focusing on key search words, give 500 characters of tags, no hashtags, no numbers, create timestamps for the important different sections. Dark Viper AU is one word, not Dark Space Viper or Dark Space Viper Space AU. Any reference to Dark Space Viper should just say Dark Viper AU. So the timestamps are 95% of the time entirely wrong and I just disregard them. The titles are never good, but they will occasionally, because they've thrown out some random garbage, I can kind of synthesize and make something that's actually good. And the description, as I say, doesn't matter which is why I use it, right? Like, I'm not entirely sure that it has no value to have a des description and keywords, while the common sentiment is that it has no value. Maybe it might have a tiny amount of value, so it's better to have something there at least. But my experiences with AI is that AI is very bad. It sucks at doing the things that I needed to do, and so I use it in this very limited capacity. So at the end of the day, I don't think Ned Luke's takes were necessarily hypocritical. I say necessarily because there's some ambiguity in exactly what he means and where he draws the line. And to what extent he cared more about the idea of AI voices being cloned than AI asks. It was because one affects him more uh, and the other less. Like, it's hard to say. I don't think his positions 
uh, obviously in, in contradiction. I don't think he's necessarily being a hypocrite. I don't find his stance to be particularly objectionable. But of course, everyone disagrees on the issue of AI art, so feel free to disagree. We've talked about this before. One of the things that annoys me most about AI art is whenever I see art, I have to think to myself, is this AI? Was this made by someone showcasing their talents and their love of something? Or did someone just write a prompt? I got a message from a person who's like, hey, I drew you in a bunch of different styles. I'm a huge fan. If you want me to draw you something, let me know. And I looked at it. I'm like, I don't know how to respond to this because it was like they, they drew me like an anime style, a, a South Park style, a, some other TV show style. I'm like, you could do this with AI in like 10 seconds or you could have done this yourself because you actually like my stuff. You, you could be a person who is looking for work and you want to see if I, I, I want you to draw something. Or you could be a person who wants a job to type something into an AI prompt to generate me something. It, it just sucks. I hate that ambiguity. The, the fakers will always call into question the legitimacy of those who are actually legitimate. Could ask for the drawing process if you're willing to ask. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, in the same way you can get a hand cam for a person doing a speed run, I could get a person to record themselves drawing it on a, on a whatever they used to draw. Obviously, I wasn't invested enough to go through such things. I have artists that I use for the stuff that I, I, I need for my stuff, and that's good enough for me. At the end of the day, kind of going back to the conversation with about Asmongold, if people are willing to use the products and uh, there's no systemic change that prevents it, it's inevitable that it will stick around, you know? Because a lot of people just don't care. As long as enough people don't care, then uh, it will stick around. Stop! Now that I have your attention, hit the like and subscribe button. Thank you. I wish you all the best.